Auto insurance can all seem the same until it comes time to use it. So don't get stuck paying more for less coverage. Switch to USA Auto Insurance and you could start saving money in no time. Get a quote today. Restrictions apply. So what's it like to buy your first cryptocurrency on Kraken? Well, let's say I'm at a food truck I've never tried before. Am I going to go all in on the loaded taco? No, sir. I'm keeping it simple, starting small. That's trading on Kraken. Pick from over 190 assets and start with the 10 bucks in your pocket. Easy. Go to Kraken.com and see what crypto can be. Not investment advice. Crypto trading involves risk of loss. Cryptocurrency services are provided to U.S. and U.S. territory customers by Payward Interactive Inc. PWI, DBA Kraken. View PWI's disclosures at Kraken.com slash legal slash disclosures. Okay. Hey, guys. Welcome to this week's podcast episode. And I've got a fantastic guest for you today, Carrie Boatner. And she helps individuals with midlife issues, identity issues to help create the lives they, they want. She's got a fantastic story. And like I said, this is an entrepreneurship business podcast. And for all the, all the audience, I'd love to welcome Carrie to the show. Welcome. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah. I know I'll briefly talk about who you are, how you got there, and how the audience can benefit from you today. Yeah, absolutely. Who am I? I am I am a middle-aged woman. I am a former executive in the world of nonprofit. And I had a really I've had a really crazy last 5 years of transition and through that process I decided to be a coach because I hired a coach during my transition myself and it changed my life. So I wanted to do that for others. So I am here helping other midlife people through whatever they're going through whether that's retirement loss of spouse, aging parents, all the stuff that we face in midlife. Yeah, I love that. And what's interesting is that this whole area of coaching is is uh, really blossoming. And if you have a particular skill in helping people achieve X without Y, and so in, especially in this age, talk about why it's so important to get some help, whether you're having a midlife or you're relationship, identity, because people feel so lost in the world today. Yeah. Oh, boy. Especially today, right? It's it's a <laughs> trying time <laughs> from COVID to everything else. So for me, having help, seeking help is all about community. Human beings mm -hmm. are not meant to do this on their own, right? When yeah. we spin out in our mind about what's going on or we create these stories or we're based in fear, it helps so much to sit in front of someone or a group of people and, and talk about what's going on, right? To have a really, a good mirror with somebody else. And coaching for me, it did that for me, but also for me as a coach, I'm able to almost hear what people are not saying as well, right? It's what's underneath it, what's underneath all that pain and that fear. And that's what we get at. And we really work on that and the limiting beliefs, the beliefs that they have from childhood or from wherever that hold them back from having what they want in their life. Yeah. It's like broad level. What are the most common issues facing people today? Is it finances or relationship? I know I, I talked to a lot of Gen Z millennials. Yeah. They're just so lost and like the system doesn't work for them and they follow the rules and, you know, just they're still behind. Talk, what are the top issues affecting people? Yeah, I think you nailed a bunch yeah. of them, right? Finances. How do we make money that is sustaining? How do we plan for retirement? What does retirement even mean anymore, right? Where social security is in question. All of these things are up in the air, right? So finances are huge. For me, dealing with people in midlife, the question about retirement, what am I going to do after I stop working? Can I stop working, number one? And then if I can, what am I going to do with my time? I don't want to waste it right? There are so many people who retire, certainly my parents' generation, who didn't plan for what they were going to do. And they end up sitting around going, we're on a fixed income. We didn't make any plans. So now we're bored. And I wish I was still working and still interacting with other people, right? So mm -hmm. those two are big. I think middle age, again, caring for aging parents is really something that's been tough for people. We're at that age where our kids are becoming adults and our parents are becoming kids in a sense. So we're in that crossroads of being pulled in both ways. Our parents and our kids still need us. So those are some big ones that I encounter. 
on a regular basis. Yeah. And what's, you know, that we could go in so many directions. The world is just completely different than it was uh, 20, 40 years ago. And now also just our, basically our world. So how do you help your clients write their life stories and break free from these societal and self-imposed limitations? Yeah. Oh, that's, that is the most fun <laughs> part, right? Yeah. It's the first thing we do is we dive into what their current story is. What are they telling themselves? What is the narrative that they keep playing over and over again? And so much of that, what's so funny is we don't realize it until someone is saying to us, wait a minute, I think that's part of your story. That might not even be true anymore, right? So we yeah. really get into what they believe is their story of their past and of their present day and what they think based on that old story is going to be their future. And the fun part of all of that is to be able to say to these folks who are struggling, hey, guess what? Your past does not dictate your future. You get to create whatever it is you want to create. So we break down all of that stuff, that old yucky stuff that they think. And then we say, now what do you want? Right? What do you want in the next half of your life? And then we build that out. We talk about what's realistic. We do short, medium-term, long-term goals. And we just... We work on this thing together in this really holistic, because it's not just about what we have. It's about how we feel, right? And if we are telling a new story that makes us feel better about ourselves, so much more is possible. I love that, the narrative. And again, today seems to be the, the mindset. Yes, because what we're mm -hmm. talking about is, so one thing that's a lot of the audiences is they're, they're very high achieving. So when you talk yeah. about either success, a lot of them deal with imposter syndrome. Mm. And then you mentioned retirement. So what unique techniques do you have to help clients tackle guilt, shame, imposter, and, um, and also yeah. um, redefining themselves in today's youth-driven culture? Sure. Yeah. Um, so imposter syndrome is an interesting one for us folks getting older, especially with technology moving at such a rapid pace. Yeah. I have a client who said to me recently, he said, I just, I know I have so much to give, but I feel like these kids are around me, right? These 20 somethings, 30 somethings, they're saying things that I don't understand anymore. <laughs> and he said, and I don't know where I fit. And I feel like I'm nervous about losing my job because I'm too old and I'm not fitting in. I just, I'm not sure where I fit in all of this. And what we talked about was him accessing his wisdom and him standing on that is his foundation, right? He's worked 35 years in this industry. What he knows has nothing to do with technology, but it has everything to do with how that particular company works and the people, the customers, et cetera. So standing on the foundation of wisdom for us people still in the workforce and feeling like we're imposters, that's a huge piece, right? Because it matters. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, the, I think in the future, we're going to have to, you know, basically boomers, Gen X, millennials, and Gen Z are going to have to coexist together because we're right. living longer and the, we have to lo work longer just to sustain ourselves. The other question you mentioned was this identity piece, and especially for people that feel like outsiders that mm -hmm. don't fit this narrative of this, the societal narrative. How do you like, like, how do you address being an out outsider, like just these emotional uh, wounds, just mm -hmm. whether you grew up in the South or you grew up in a, in a community that didn't fit you racially or culturally? How do you address those? Yeah, it's twofold, really. I mentioned this earlier is finding community, right? So finding people that understand you and your life experience and any traumas you had from growing up and being able to talk through that and lean into each other. That's really important. The second piece and the one that is often hardest for people is really looking at our own judgment on other people, right? Mm -hmm. So when we are judging others, we need to look back and go, hang on, that's why am I so worried about other people judging me if I'm judging other people, right? So if we stop and say, what is judgment? What is this really about? Is it, am I feeling lesser than, so I'm going to judge somebody else? Or am I feeling, a great example is I had a client who, really struggled with body dysmorphia, had an eating disorder. It was a young guy, actually, who felt like he was overweight. He wasn't slightly mm -hmm. overweight. It was the way he was seeing himself. Mm -hmm. And he refused to walk outside in New York City and take a walk 
because he didn't want to see fat men in his own language. I don't want to see overweight men because it reflects on me. So he was judging these people because he was just worried about himself. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we talked around that and we, we took him back to that point of where he came up with and where that, that story of him being overweight started and what it meant underneath it, right? And that helped him a lot. So he can now go out in New York City. He can walk around. He can not judge other people for their weight because he's more comfortable in himself. Mm, interesting. The other uh, follow-up question is that because you talk, you know, when the, I've been, when the narrative basically, if you look at like leadership, it's, or you look at the, like the business landscape, a lot of it's very homogeneous. And mm -hmm. if you look at the, you look at the narrative, it's perpetuated TV and all of this, it's one single story. How do you, you resolve that? Cause everybody's believing, you know, it's, it's almost like propaganda, but it's, but if you don't fit that narrative, how do you address that when the whole narrative is, I'm just curious to hear your thoughts. Yeah. So how do you okay. be outside of that narrative and still feel good? and still feel like you're enough. And a huge piece of addressing that is reminding these folks and having them do journals and meditate. Mindfulness for me is huge. Meditation is a big piece of this, is being able to sit in silence and connect to yourself. Because when you start doing that, you start realizing that, wow, all of those voices that I'm hearing all the time, that's just noise. What's real is what's inside me. What's real is this silence in this present moment. So connecting to that, and then, oh, geez, I completely lost my train of thought on that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Can you repeat the question again really quickly? Yeah, it's like, how do you fit in if the of basically course. outside yes. the narrative? Yes. <laughs> Celebrating your unique talents, your unique achievements, your unique voice, your authenticity. This is word is this is a giant buzzword. Be authentic. Authenticity. <laughs> it's a buzzword because it it means something. It means your true self. So helping them connect to who they are and be proud of who they are, regardless of the circumstances. We're all on this journey, right? And each one of ours is individual to us. So celebrating that and realizing and looking at that construct and realizing it's an illusion. It's not real, right? None of that is real. That's just made up. To your point, it's propaganda. It's what people want us to believe, but it's not real. Interesting. Yeah. The other... Thing I encounter is this basically with on this idea of uh, societal narratives and basically what would you say to someone who feels successful on paper basically they marked off all the check boxes it's they're deeply unfulfilled for example the son of a lawyer his parents make him become a lawyer but he really wants to be a, a, a singer or a musician or yeah. he wants to be I mean, he, maybe he wants to be a doctor I don't know just how do you address that if they don't know what makes them happy we start there, right? We, we start really simple. What brings you joy? What were you happy doing when you were a kid? What is that? What is that thing that you do that you lose track of time doing? So we start there and then we build on that. If somebody is a son of a lawyer and knows that they want to play the guitar, then we lean into that and we say, why aren't you doing that? What's stopping you from doing that? What would that look like? What would, the, what would a career look like as a guitarist? How does that feel when you think about that? Let's project into the future of your life. You're a guitarist. You're having an incredible time. What does that feel like for you? So we break down why they're not doing it because there's always something there, right? It's, I don't have time. Really? Do you not have time? Or are you afraid to do it? And what's the mm -hmm. fear? What are you afraid of? Are you afraid of not being good? Are you afraid of being great? And then you're going to have to make a different life choice. So we break down all of that to get them to that place of joy that material success doesn't always give people, right? You can have all the stuff in the world, but if you're not happy inside yourself with who you are and what you're doing and what brings you joy, then all that stuff doesn't matter. Yeah. And a lot of it's, yeah, a lot of it's, that's why these coaching is so critical. The other question is providing guidance for midlife transitions and what are some common misconceptions about midlife crises. What are midlife crises? How do you help your clients navigate through them? Yeah, I, I love the term midlife <laughs> crises because it is so not that. It's a midlife opportunity, in my opinion, <laughs> right? It's crunchy. It's hard. I would never say that midlife is easy. <laughs> 
It's not <laughs> because stuff starts happening that you were just completely unaware of. I can't work out like I used to, or my body doesn't move, or I'm not sleeping as well as I used to, or how am I gaining weight so quickly, or but why am I moody? A, a zillion things that happen in midlife. That's not just specific to women. It happens across the board. So what we do is we, again, we embrace where we are and say, okay, cool. I can do this. I can figure this out. If I'm moody, I know I need to take a breath and step away because we can feel that emotion coming up. If I'm feeling less energetic, maybe I don't work out as hard. You just start making adjustments for this second half of life so that we're not, I think what we try to do when we start hitting midlife and we're feeling all of this is we try to hold on to who we were. We try to hold on really tightly to this super athletic, really overly ambitious, can party all night kind of person that is not us in midlife. And if we can let go of what we were, be happy and grateful for it, but then move forward into who we actually are, that's the key. That's the key. Mm, interesting. And I was reading that now there's not just the midlife, there's like the quarter life. Oh, it's yeah. like you have a quarter life. <laughs> yeah. Each, each, they say each seven years, you go through a kind of a transition. There's something yeah. that happens. There's something that changes. And being able to go into those periods in our life, knowing that we're going to get through it, even if it's hard, really appreciating the hard too, because the hard is what helps us grow. If we stayed steady state, our whole life and didn't have these dips be boring we need it we need some dips we need some rises and falls right because ideally life we keep climbing up the mountain even though we have little dips we keep climbing up with self-growth and we become more settled happy people with ourselves mm. yeah and based in what i think is also happening is because the world is changing so quickly that basically you said every seven years you have to upgrade yeah. and whereas you know like 30 years ago, things were, they were progressing, but not as quickly. So that's yeah. what you had to write. But um, very interesting. Yeah. Uh, really interesting conversation. And how can people contact you? And, you know, yeah. I know a lot of people may want to reach yeah. out to you for coaching and uh, yeah, your you. socials, all of that. Yeah. So I am on Instagram, <laughs> Carrie Boatner Coaching. It's really simple. Same with Facebook. I'm on Facebook as well. I don't really use that all that much. I'm on LinkedIn. <laughs> it's all under Carrie Boatner Coaching. And my website is the same. So CarrieBoatnerCoaching.com. Um, would love to talk to anyone. I do free 60-minute deep dive sessions. So it's complimentary. I love meeting people. There's zero obligation if people just want to jump on and like talk about what's going on. I can give them some tips and tricks, whether or not they work with me, period. Because I just want to lift people up and, and yeah. help people out. Yeah, I love that. And for all the audience, be sure to give Carrie's socials a like and follow and reach out to her. And thanks so much for a fantastic conversation. This was wonderful, Christopher. Thank you.